right, guys. Welcome to Land Party Talk Show. This is episode 82. Glad you guys are here. This is your first time. Sit back, relax. Here we talk about all the nerdy things that we love and adore from all decades of pop culture and video games. We get together every Saturday and we discuss the news in the gaming, movie, and tech industry. I'm Justin, and today I'm joined by Elliot the Indie Acolyte. hey -o. Mr. Alex, a.k.a. Tempest for the win. What's going on, you guys? And usually we have a, a, a fourth guy here, and uh, he's just not feeling well today, as we talked about in our, our pre-show. So uh, Mr. Jordan is not here, but usually the four of us make the LAN party, but today we're doing the lovely, well, trio thing. So We are with a the, tripod. With the three awesome musketeers. Us. There we go. Or the three stooges, whatever way you guys want to look at it. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> <laughs> But we're glad, nevertheless, that you are here, that you are spending time with us on this awesome Saturday. You guys are joining us for the first time and want to know a little bit more about us. Please visit our website, landpartytalkshow.com. We're just a bunch of idiots that don't know what we're really talking about. We go in the news, we find people's articles, we still then talk about them and try to claim the news for ourselves. May work. And we, may and not work. we talk mad shit about people, too. We talk <laughs> mad shit. But we talk Just so much me. shit that we have a shirt coming in 2020 that'll be dedicated to not being a shit piece of shit. So, God damn right. So, yeah. Join all of us. Join our endeavors of video gaming and nerdism and join our ranks. Come to Discord. Talk to us. Hang out with us. Get to meet us and know us. We're not that great, but we can be if you, if you give us a chance to be. So, come by. Hang out. <laughs> but as of always, we'll start off talk about some news and oh yeah i was on the fence of what to talk about and i did go through uh both of these things because i am extremely excited for this show i'm ready for a fucking trailer because the trailer will be what really either sells me or tells me that this show is not going to be worth a fucking shit but as of right basically now, i'm excited because they've got the halo tv series by showtime i believe um that is coming they've got Plenty of people attached to this cast so far. It, it looks interesting. It looks fun. They've got Pablo Schreiber playing Master Chief. I doubt he'll ever be unmasked, seeing as Pablo Schreiber is dark-headed and green-eyed, not red-headed and blue-eyed. Uh, so we'll probably have the infamous problem of Halo, where we never see the hero's face. But nevertheless, he's like 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, or something like that, so motherfucker's tall and i'm sure when they put him in the suit and the boots and everything else he'll probably be like seven two or something like that but uh, uh let's that see is, that is really tall dude yeah he, yeah, yeah he's super it's tall. insane and his brother's even tall too if you guys have ever watched like the wolverine or uh mm -hmm. the x-men origins wolverine oh wait uh, he, is he uh saber tooth yeah leave schreiber that's his brother yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So this dude, yeah. this dude's little brother Pablo is playing Master Chief, and Pablo's even taller than uh to, than Leave, and Leave's like six five or six three or something like what? that. Yeah, their whole family is just fucking. Yeah, they're tall. fucking <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Attack on Titans over there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well he is played, playing my a friend. Titan of a character, so. I mean, they both wow. kind of did. I mean, Sabretooth's a pretty popular character, and, and Master a fucking Chief monster. is a icon in, in modern video gaming and science fiction. I mean, there's people out there that love the books, love the TV shows, the animations and cartoons, the video games. I mean, Master Chief has a huge following. So, But yeah, the Halo TV show adds three more cast members. Uh, let's see, they've added, or so far... They're about to begin. Yeah, they they released a picture a couple days ago. Let's see when did this come out? November eighth. So this was literally yesterday. Uh, the Halo Showtime Twitter account posted uh, the cast is assembled. The table reads are complete. Production on the Showtime Halo series is about to begin. And then they posted a picture of a very heavy cast. Uh, let's see: Danny Sapani, Doctor Who, Black Panther, uh, Olive Gray from Fleabag. Charlie Murphy from Peaky Blinders uh, have been cast for the 2021 Showtime series. Network announced that Sapani will take on the role of Captain Jacob Keyes, a war hero, father working with his daughter and ex-wife. Gray uh, will plan Dr. Miranda Keyes, or will pl plan? I'm guessing that meant to probably say play. 
uh, Dr. Miranda Keys, an UNSC commander who has dedicated her life to understanding the culture and technology. And then finally, Murphy will play Mackie, a woman who was orphaned and raised by the Alien Covenant to hate humanity. So that'd be an interesting take. Hmm. But okay. I'm yeah, so uh, for the people in chat, I posted the first story that we had talked about. The very first picture in that article shows exactly how tall the actor is who's playing Master Chief, and mm-hmm. he's just under seven feet tall. And he's they even have like crouching. little, uh, yeah. He's even crouching. Well, yeah, but I'm no. Picture if you look. <laughs> well, no, no the, no, the first picture in the article where it has oh, yeah. the height chart oh, yeah, and he's yeah, holding yeah, the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's damn near fucking seven feet he's tall. Like seven feet. <laughs> he's perfect for that role. Yep. No, just no, on yeah. height alone. And I love that helmet that he has too. It looks so good. Wow. Oh yeah, it looks nice. This so yeah, like 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 you were saying, Justin, the trailer or like little preview that they're gonna do for this is either gonna make or break this show. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I, I I'm excited, you know. We got all these video game properties like coming to Netflix, and right now, you know, there's like this this mystery of Netflix shows that are kind of in the background that are not being talked about. But there, from what I understand, there's shows like God of War in the talks. There is a Mario show in the talks. I know it's supposed to be an animation or a CGI film or TV show. I'm not sure what they're doing with that yet. Um, and then we got like Sonic on the horizon, which they've just done the redesign. And I got to admit, they, they outdid themselves. It actually looks really good uh, compared to what they had originally had. They gave them the big white gloves and you know the big feet and shit like that. Uh, but I think right now we're in a state where if these new video game properties start to succeed more than fail, I think we're going to see a shift in, in TV and movie uh, because we, they've, they've tried to kind of cross that bridge a couple of times. And, yeah, I think they're waiting on the success of The Witcher, which I think The Witcher is going to have a little bit of a different success because of the books that they have as part of the lore and not so much the video game. Um, so they have a lot more to pull from than just a video game lore. But Master Chief, you know, they have tons of books. They have tons of video games and lore to go back on. So I think both of these shows will be a lot more adaptable than just like your typical video game you know, TV show, like if somebody were to go and make an Assassin's Creed TV show, it'd be kind of hard to do that because they don't have as many books or background lore. They just have what they tried in, you know, with uh, the Michael Fassbender movie. And if they don't take their time, and I think that's kind of what that movie kind of failed for is they don't have the time in a movie to really display going back into the past, coming back to the present, and then showing both of those worlds adequately. So... But if if both of these shows, The Witcher and, and this Halo series, both succeed, I think we'll see like a, a shift in the, the paradigm where we'll start to see more video game properties coming to television and movie, which would be kind of interesting. I always enjoy like uh, either TV series or movies that are based off of video games or something. Oh, but too. I think everyone hates when they always go with a different direction that has nothing to do with the games. They just kind of use the games as a, as a launching pad to get views, and then they just yeah. Kinda, completely butcher the entire series just for the sake of making a quick buck yeah, and like i like how it ever. seems like <laughs> yeah pretty much like especially back in like the 90s or something yeah. like that or Resident but Evil. i'm really oh, oh god. god shut the fuck up <laughs> Dude. but like I, i'm happy to see that you know um games at least the story or not the story but the lore in the in the uh um, the world that's created around a video game, they can at least utilize that to maybe expand on it. Maybe not go with what the the uh, the games capture, whatever the storyline that the games are capturing, but I like that they take the world, they take the lore, and actually utilize that to make a whole movie or a TV series and actually give it the seriousness that video gamers, you know, people like us, play the game with and want to interact with and 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 be involved and immersed into a, another world kind of thing. I think Absolutely. that's really cool because... Because I think this may bring, maybe this can be the bridge that non-gamers can enjoy something. Because either you watch a bunch of TV, you know, about whatever. But if you know that a TV series you're about to engage is based off of a game and you end up watching and you really like it, who knows? Maybe you like, maybe I'll just go play the game because I like that kind of lore. Right. You know, you never know. So I think yeah. certain and, games could kind of adapt well to the, the TV or movie market. Like, you know, I think Halo has a great opportunity because 
there's a lot of things in the game that we don't see, like the like uh, the war stuff. You know, we don't see any of the politics. Uh, a lot. Well, yeah, and so much of it is captured in the books. If you go right. and read the books, mm -hmm. they go in Rich. so much more like, you know, yeah, you see all the Master Chief stuff, but you don't see everything else in like the background where mm -hmm. other people are just like, you know, like, all right, we got to go liberate this planet and people are just being fucking wiped out left and right because right. technologically they can't really keep up. They never go. They don't even go into like the space battles that take place between the Covenant and you know earth and all that stuff where like we're basically trying our freaking our best like they're throwing crazy tactics out there you're like there's no way this is gonna work and then it ends up like working and stuff and it's just it's crazy oh, yeah. yeah i mean but, as uh, long as the director has respect for what the content is i i think it will open the door for a lot more people that don't play video games at all maybe at least enjoy yeah. that lore Absolutely. even if they don't play it, who cares you know it makes a good story like even if you don't play the yeah. game the story behind oh. it is a phenomenal war-based story that anybody of like the regular science fiction genre or just war movies in general is most likely going to find enjoyable that the linchpin for that though is if they stick to the source material and don't like not make a quick buck like they're like they're doing with uh, kind of died again like Assassin's Creed or God something? damn it. There you go. <laughs> Fucking hate my microphone today. It hates me, I should say. Oh, uh, yeah, but no, definitely. I, I think if they kind of stick to the source material versus like like Alex was saying, they're trying to just do it to make, make a, a dollar. Quick buck, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, if they have real interest and real love for the background material, then I think we could have some real successes on our hands. And hopefully that would lead in the I future, maybe... <laughs> As Seems long as the prerequisite could be, you can't make a movie out. Like, director could not make a movie out unless they play the video games, <laughs> <laughs> unless they're gamers so, themselves. You know. Well, the crazy thing is, though, is like I think a lot of video games that have been made into movies would have been more successful as a miniseries or something like HBO or Showtime or something like that, where it's episodic, broken down an hour at a time, instead of trying to cram all this stuff into a hour and a half to two hour window. Yeah. I don't think any video games should ever be made into just a movie unless they're planning on doing a multi-movie deal. That way we can- Well, no, so I, I could see like one-shot video games possibly being able to successfully yeah, like do that Alan, something like along the lines Alan of Wake like- Alan Wake movie or something like that? Yeah, like an Alan Wake or something where that there's only work, yeah. one game. It's not, so it's not a series where they're taking- you know, these four games and right. the whole story of those four games and condensing it down into an hour and a half to two hours. Right. Like Detroit instead. Become Human. Like if we could go... That to would like, make a great movie. Right. That would be something that... I mean, but even though, I mean, I could honestly see that being a good TV show. <laughs> good Lord. But uh, yeah, I think Detroit Become Human. I mean, now that I say it, but yeah, I mean, I guess that could be a good TV show too because then you could take more time I mean, with seeing Detroit the Detroit Become Human, like... It's more like an interactive story than oh, it is yeah. like a video game. I oh, feel like, yeah. I mean, it is a video game technically, but um, it's not like you do a whole lot with it. You just yeah. more like interact with different sections. But I mean, like that, it's still a good point. There are still lots of narrative driven games yes. in there. Alan Wake, or not Alan Wake, but uh, um, I just think uh, Alan Wake would kind of uh, Inchar like Uncharted, movie. you know, the Uncharted series, I think would be a great uh, oh, yeah. Far Cry. I think Absolutely. there's plenty of s different sources out there that we could make a movie out of easily. Mm -hmm. Get some good com uh, good uh, actions in there and drama. Right. So there's there's plenty of video games. And if I mean, and they have all these worlds that are beloved by many. So if they think that they can just pick up a property like Halo and then just go make something that's non related to anything Halo ever. They're going to get a lot of hate on their hands. You know what, I, dude? Like, if I would love to see a, uh, a, a either a uh, a trilogy of some sort or a TV series of Mass Effect yeah, done literally really, really well. And you know, really is, I can see that. Yeah. I, I don't, and I don't know if you guys ever use, like, the... Hey! I don't know if you guys ever used, like, the, the default model or if you made your own character, but I always used, like, the default, cat, like, Commander Shepard. So like the big buff shaved headed dude. It, the, the cool thing about that though, they could use him because that's a real fucking person. Yeah, that's a real yeah. that's a real model yep. that they they yep. picked to play him. So they could easily go in. They could fucking dub it right, and and give him like the voice of the dude that voiced him in the actual video game. 
So, yeah, that would be absolutely – I mean, even if it's just a cameo, it doesn't necessarily even have to be about Commander Shepard. It could be about another – uh, like Dude, crew. it could be it could be within the same timeline yes. that you play kind of like the NBA, like the other people, or you just follow right. other people during this whole thing, and then you just get like 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 you said like a little cameo guest star like of actual Shepard doing yeah. something or, or whatever Seth he comes Green in. Just walk across the screen at one point and say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You no, no, like I said, they're, they're... <laughs> no, it's still not working. Are you kidding me? No, there you there go. We go. <laughs> uh, I swear to God, today. Today yep. is the day I just throw everything off my desk. <laughs> All right. But yeah, Halo, Halo news, Halo funness. Keep an eye out because it's Halo and we all love Halo. So that's my Halo news tidbit for today. All right. All right. Uh, so all right. we got Elliot moving on. We got more stuff about uh, Hearthstone and the band they did about the Free Hong Kong and everything. Okay. Uh, so this one is a little bit different, though. It doesn't really directly involve any of the drama. It's just uh, basically uh, after the ban, the lead head director, uh, Jeff Kaplan of Overwatch, has actually finally uh, spoken up about this um, and how basically he's quoted as saying, I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. It's something that's very important to me. It got to me personally. I think the punishment was too harsh and I was greatly relieved when they gave his money back. And I think that was extremely important. But then he goes on to say that he actually had wished that instead of it being a six month ban, they either reduced it even more or they just entirely got rid of that ban in general because he doesn't think it uh, was very fair because he's mostly upset with how quickly um, the ban took place. Because So he's like the lead director for Overwatch. He actually sits in on meetings about banning people and he, like he's part of the people, one of the people that makes the decision on whether or not to ban people like outside of an automated system. And he says it even takes them like sometimes like one or two days for certain cases just to come to a consensus on that. And he's was shocked at how quickly they came out with this year ban and took away all of his winnings. It's such a, it's such a sense of place to be in. I would never want to be in any of the, like the, the PR of uh, blizzards position at all, because there's no pleasing everybody in this situation because as yeah. a business you do have to make a point you do have to make an example and unfortunately this guy was the one that kind of crossed the line but they didn't really have they've never come across this situation before and we've discussed that you know so it's like you're going to make mistakes everyone's going to make mistakes you have to set an example you have to tell people this is the line but to say hey we'll give all your winnings back we'll unban you forever blah blah, blah kind of thing and, but don't do it again, otherwise be banned. Well, there's no example, and it just kind of still allows like that possible window or door to kind of for other people to kind of intrude on, and then they'll have to set the example because they didn't do it before. Well, no, like, see, I, I'm of the like, the opposite mindset of. I feel that they did the ban, they did it really quickly, really harshly, and then they eased yes. up on it. I think mm -hmm. that was setting enough of an example where other people go, okay, now we know. Like the rules are now set in stone. They're clear of what you can and cannot say during these official events. Yeah. And exactly. it does and, and it didn't it doesn't end up permanently harming him. Yeah, that is, you know, like, like this is like his main this is like his main form of income. Yeah, exactly. And now he can't for six months now, he can't play the game. He can't make money off of it. And that's a little bit on the unfair side, I think, because I think the initial reaction did set the precedent. All the things they've said leading up after that has made it clear. They even came out with the rule, or they even had the rule there. They just reiterated on it and made like more specific points on it of these are the things you can talk about. These are the things you can't talk about. You know, If you do these things, X, Y, and Z will happen. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if they did completely reverse it, the point would still stand of if you do these things, this is the punishment you will get. But we won't go and overturn it because now you know the consequences of your actions it just yeah it, it sucks because i think 
it's hard to separate uh, the two different things, right? The freedom of speech and people's, you know, um, emotional connection to that and how important it is. It's obviously very important, but people also don't want to put aside like a time and place for everything. And this is the time to be professional. This is the time for just being focused on the tournament thing and not making, this is not open up to a soapbox about whatever you want to talk about. It has nothing to do with anything that we're doing. You won the tournament. We're talking about Hearthstone here. It has nothing to do with Hong Kong. Even though that is very important, there's a million things we could talk about in this world that could be happening, you know, that have nothing to do with anything that you just accomplished or did or achieved. And it, it sucks because some people don't want to take that into consideration. They just, everything should be po like political. And that's, that's what I kind of hate about when politics leak into anything. I'm a, I'm a, I hate dealing with politics. Because oh God, everything, yeah. it's, it's, any, it's anything crazier. sensible or reasonable to have a conversation, uh, professionalism, all that appropriate, you know, uh, things to talk about and how to talk about it goes out the window because now everyone's emotions got triggered by something, you know, and once you, it's like, like I said, it's like the proper rule, like don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics, don't talk about, you know, all this other stuff in a general conversation that has nothing to do with what we're participating in use yeah. that on your own platform like i said and and like like i said like the whole blizzard thing i i did i do think an example should have been met and i think it was yeah i think the year punishment that's too harsh i'm glad they gave his winnings back i'm glad they reduced at least to reduce the, the um the ban do i think they should reduce it more sure i think that's still reasonable you know make it three months or some shit you know kind of thing but i think no matter how you cut this cake everyone's gonna be unhappy Somebody's going to be, there's still going to be people out there, even if you completely remove the ban, there's still be people angry that you did it in the first place. And that's what they're, that's what they're going to hold on to. There's yeah, some, I get that. Mind, there's some people, because I've looked up on YouTube videos about, especially with this whole new BlizzCon, they announced a bunch of stuff Overwatch 2, the next expansion for Blizzard, the, Diablo 4, or, or for WoW, I mean, uh, uh, Diablo 4 and stuff like that. And, and honestly, all three of those things were powerhouses. Everyone reacted very positively, and they had. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Blizzard got a lot of good, I think, support. They did a really good job this time around, as far as what they're providing, what get people excited for. And I don't. It's just like people just kind of need to move on from this. Like I, I've already said my piece. Like I don't think this was a big, big deal. It just something got hit that they haven't dealt with before. It got handled inappropriately, but I think people just need to move on from it. I think Blizzard apology was very sincere, even though I read comments down where people are like, fuck you still. I'm like, I think you just want to be angry to be angry at this point. I don't, I, I well, think they so really meant their apology. I think the only, the only part of the apology that I think most people are upset with is the fact that they didn't directly apologize to the player. So it was basically just a blanket, hey, we're sorry, instead of, Hey, Blitz Chung, we're really sorry this happened to you. You know, here's why we did it. That kind of thing. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't personalized. Mm -hmm. I guess is why people are upset. I, I think. It, I don't think it needed to be because I think. What, what I mean, what else are they apologizing for? Oh, okay, I, I'm just playing devil's advocate at this point. I think the, well, the I, apology I know, was sufficient. It's saying, just what I, other I people think, are saying. Yeah, but I think people are still too nitpicky. It's it's just never going to be enough. Like because they didn't generalize it at a, they're not going to make their whole thing right about this guy they're just gonna say everyone knows there is nobody that doesn't know what fucking just happened right so we are apologizing for basically at this point public records you yeah. know everyone knows it's obvious what we're apologizing for we don't have to address it directly we're just here you know no one asked us to or anything that we're just here to tell you at our event we're sorry we are we are better than this and we know we messed up on this thing that we're not going to address, but we're going to, we guys know what we're talking about. I mean, I think it was sincere. I don't think you need to address it directly. You know, this wasn't, this is event isn't oh, about, yeah. you know, yeah. him. this event was their mistake. And that's yeah, no, totally addressing. understandable on that part. But uh, there is a few points I did want to clarify when I was talking earlier. Uh, so he's involved in determining bans and suspensions for overwatch league players. So for their pro players, and again, he was saying that it apparently usually takes four or five days to figure those out. Mm -hmm. um, something else that was interesting, though, is uh, he, he even said that himself being so high level in the company and most of his Overwatch team, they weren't even aware of what had happened. Oh, no. Until, until news sites started reporting on 
the ban and what was going on. And that's I mean, for, and that's where he comes from thinking it was way yeah. too quick of a thing that happened. Like no one sat down and had meetings about it. It was just it was a very knee jerk reaction yes. in that regard. When you're as big as Blizzard, when you're a multi billion dollar company like Blizzard, and you have so many departments for so many, I mean, think about games they are providing that are huge. There's no little game that they have at this point. I mean, maybe for Heroes of the Storm, <laughs> maybe, but I mean, like Overwatch and WoW and Diablo and like all these other games that they are, I mean, and Hearthstone and stuff. Like, there are so many things that, I mean, unfortunately the uh the incident had to be bigger for blizzard to really look at you know uh any kind of with uh uh intensity i guess you know otherwise it's like okay hearthstone's having a problem but until it affects blizzard and that's why this had nothing this is when blizzard themselves not just the department of hearthstone but the blizzard people and said like we messed up and we're sorry. It, this is, I mean, we've already apologized. We've already addressed the issue with this player personally, which is where it should be. But to the rest of the players who got upset with how the thing was handled and how it affected you and your trust in us, I think that's what the apology was meant. It was for the rest of the people to assure them, like, we are sorry. Obviously, we messed up. We did this. But, you know, for the rest of you guys that got affected and possibly, you know, like, because I know you guys want to like us and all that stuff. But, oh, yeah, that's why I think it was for. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like uh, Weezer said in chat here was, you know, basically returning the money and reducing the ban was the direct apology to him. And the verbal yes. was basically for their player yes. base that felt like they were. Attacked. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. it worked out in their favor. Like it brought a lot of people back into the camp for Blizzard of, OK, we'll start playing your games again. You know, that kind of thing. Yep. I think so. uh, the fact that they made the apology, you know, they actually I felt like it was a good apology for the the player base because they already. Like I said, they already handled the thing with uh, the pro player one-on-one -on -one with him. And that's where it should be. It shouldn't be up to the public. You know, it, it should just be, it, we addressed it. We're cool now. We both have an understanding. It's not, he's not saying anything bad to us. Or We both learned our lessons. We're both walking in different directions. We're good now. And now for the rest of the people that knew about it, we are, we're going to, we're taking accountability for our action. We're sorry for that. You know, we're going to be better. And yeah, I think people just know. need to put it behind them because yep. at, at the end of the day, it was something small in my mind and we just need to move past because i i think they had a really good blizzcon this oh summer. yeah no blizzcon turned out really good i think you are uh, i'm with you on that where i think a lot of people just need to move on from this issue like at this point i think if people are still complaining about it you're basically just beating a dead horse like yeah. we're not going to gain anything from it i don't i don't think his punishment is going to get lessened any more than it already has been so we just kind of need to just like let it go worry about the next thing that kind of thing I mean, if they want to by the time they would even reduce it it wouldn't matter because it's already it's time enough time will be passing that yeah it, exactly it won't matter you know exactly i'm sure i'm honestly and i'm sure from what I heard, we've heard about him he's already signed up with other uh, another company so it, to him it's already in the river mirror right like he's not losing sleep over this he's not angry he's not going on his twitter he's not going on his platform talking about this bad mouthing blizzard He's like, you know what? Other opportunities has come. I've learned a lesson and it made me a better person and I'm moving forward. And that's at the end of the day, the person that actually affected, if they're moving forward and they're okay with it, then it should not matter to anybody else. No one else should be, um, you know, doing a riot over this whole thing because you're not the one affected anymore. Right. Bunch of cray cray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so I think it's that time of the show there, uh, Justin. I think we say, beat this dead I horse. Say, if we're, I was going to say, if we're moving on, let's move on to the ad read. <laughs> yeah, ad read. So if you guys are enjoying the show so far and want to support us even further, then please consider subscribing to us on Patreon. Patreon is a membership platform, so for as little as $5 a month, you guys can unlock some exclusive content like our pre and post show, new episodes being viewed to the new people like you guys, so uh, anything that we do new, we, we put through Patreon first to kind of test the waters. Um, and we post pictures and other shit, you know, like we had Miss Temp on there for a little bit. Uh, so if you subscribe, you can see all that good stuff before anybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Miss Temp. <laughs> uh, we need to make a Miss, a Miss like Jules now or a Miss Jordan. <laughs> That yeah, way. exactly. That way, if uh, if he he's out, we can, yeah, we can do it. We've already got a uh, uh, Emma, so we're good on that hand. 
Uh, You're welcome for that, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you guys don't know who Emma is, join the Discord and come find out. (laughs) Uh, Also, you guys can't make it to a Saturday show. Come watch us live on Twitch. And you can also listen to us on Audio Boom, who sponsors our show. They distribute us through all their partnerships with Apple, Google Play, uh, Spotify, TuneIn, Deezer, Stitcher, uh, fucking Radio.com. All these other just different podcast formats. So if you don't want to watch us on or listen to us on Audio Boom, then you can listen to us on any of those other services. Uh, just go check it out. If you guys don't know how to find that stuff, then just go to our website at thelandpartytalkshow.com. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this little tab just called Audio Links. And that'll give you all the audio links to every one of our podcast shows. I th- think except for the radio.com because that one's still pretty new. Um, and I don't have it set up yet, but go to the, go to that website, check all that stuff out, go subscribe to us on Patreon, all that money will help go to the show, make everything better and more fun and more juicy and give us, uh, even giveaway stuff. That way we can do giveaways here on the show like once a month. So go check all that awesome schnazzy stuff out, guys. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, this, this next, next, uh, uh, topic, man, this is more like a picnic basket topic here this is right so now there's a lot of things that we could touch on with this one so i feel like i want to hear people's opinions about this one i mean not, not just this particular one but just in general because i think this opens up to a, a wider subject that's kind of like i don't know if you're a gamer you'll know what we'll get into here so um popular twitch streamer well not twitch but mixer streamer streamer in general ninja so he thinks fortnite streamers caught cheating deserve special treatment uh is basically what he, the umbrella subject here is so popular streamer ninja has provided his thoughts on phase jarvis of his permanent ban on fortnite saying the punishment was too harsh for the pro gamer who was caught using aimbot cheats now i know elliot you were talking we were talking kind of lightly talking about this uh before the show here but so feel free because i know you said that his opinion has changed oh uh, yeah right? later on down in, a little bit later in the article it talks about his change because he did a stream after he made his tweet about it and then he kind of he expanded on it a bit more and the article does touch on what he expanded okay, and it also so, goes into his reasoning. So just continue. Okay. So his, so his original statement, I guess. So he said that Jarvis is a stupid kid making a stupid decision, but felt a permanent ban is just silly. According to Ninja content creators and regular players should be handled differently by companies seeking to dish out punishment. Um, end quote. He said, there's a difference between a content creator who has millions of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of followers who get, who gets banned from literally what makes him money. And some kid who is a piece of shit who has absolutely zero following has zero money that comes from gaming and hacks. Ninja said, you ban that kid. Nothing happens to him. Nothing happens. Oh no, he can't cheat anymore. You ban Jarvis. It's different. The stakes are different. It should be handled a little bit differently. Just look at the situation. It needs to be handled differently because it's different. He uses different a lot in these quotes. A content creator cheating whose entire life is about the game he's playing and some random who has no YouTube channel, no Twitter account. He doesn't, des- he doesn't even care. He just cheats. He, ha- he, hacks the- he hacks the hacks. You ban one, you ruin his life. You ban the other, he makes another account and keeps cheating. It's different. It has, no- uh, it has to be handled differently. Now, he said Ninja did admit later on that his initial reaction was wrong later in the Mixer live stream, but does believe the punishment for juveniles and adults should be differently or should be different just as they are handled in the legal system. Uh, a kid at a video game, a kid cheating at a video game is a little bit different than in a grown adult cheating in a video game. An adult should be able to experience and think things over and reflect on consequences because they're experienced in life, uh, they're experienced life longer. I think I think he meant to say they've experienced life longer. Okay. And they realize that everything in life has consequences, Ninja said. As a child, they need to learn these things. Should the bans be the exact same? Technically, no, because when someone usually commits murder past the age of 18 or 19, they're considered an adult, and that's why they get trialed as an adult. That's technically not true, because there are cases where um, the, the crime is so horrific yeah yeah horrendous Uh, even at the age of like 14 or 15 they're trialed as an adult you know um kind of thing so i I like how (laughs) it's so funny that he he compares murder to cheating in video games i think that's just kind of funny in itself but if you're (laughs) (laughs) i mean i can kind of see what he's saying as far as like the content creator 
from what I understand and what I read about it, and I don't read much about Fortnite, so the fact that I even know this much is, is blowing my own mind. But apparently the kid was on there uh, doing a stream showing in a single-player format by himself with people watching him what these cheats were doing and how they work and stuff like that. And that's why he got banned. Uh, so I guess somebody he was demonstrating. Him. He was demonstrating. Well, so I even saw a clip of that stream where he was even saying, like, you know, I feel like I'm probably going to get banned for showing you guys this on my right. account. It's like, so maybe you should. Yeah. So, uh, your mic okay. out again. <laughs> so, like, that, I guess, uh, hell no. See, that's, it's a little, I feel like it complicates things because my, my opinion is on cheating in general. Like, I don't really care if you're a content creator or someone that is just playing a video game like everybody else in this world. If you're cheating, you should get punished in general. Like, there should be a permanent ban. There shouldn't be a demonstration of what cheats are. There, like, why should there be a demonstration? First off, like, why even promote or even explore that? I mean, maybe that should, if that's what you want your content to be. But I mean, cheating's cheating. Yeah. Sure, you no, can cheat like... in a single player game, and I guess that shouldn't be banned because you're not really affecting anybody if you're in a single player game, like truly a single player game. Who fucking cares at that point? Right. You bought the game. You're not affecting anyone else. You play it the way you want. You want to change the scripts around there? Go right ahead. I mean, I, it's like, who cares? You know, I've used cheats in like back in the day, like all the time. I mean, some cheats are actually in the game. You just go and hit the console and just do, 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 and yep. punch. Yeah, it no, like a lot of games that are built in. Like there's a lot of games where it's built in. You, know, you look yeah. at the Sims. They're built yes. into the game. GTA with yep. the cell phone built yep. into the game. That's like a, now, a lot of single player it, games well, I play. It, I like using trainers every now and then, just because half the time, if it's a game that, I, especially if it's a game that I've already played and beaten, and I just want to go in and fuck around, then I'll I'll use a trainer. I don't really care. I mean, I mean, I think with this incident with Jarvis from Phase, um, I don't know a lot about him in particular, but I think just the fact that you're streaming, even in a single player setting, because no one plays. Fortnite first off in a single player setting or barely anybody does everyone plays it for the multiplayer to promote or at least review what cheats do when it should be just blatantly obvious what cheats even look like or what they accomplish I mean right. but I think you are in a sense um, because you are someone known who has a following you are in a sense promoting something that is against the rules of a game that people could easily apply to a multiplayer setting that does affect people because you showed them this you know oh. i think i think there's an argument to be had that 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 him did that you know doing that does that kind of stuff yeah. see, you know it, it uh, was still technically multiplayer but it was like a private game or something like that mm -hmm. um so he was as far as i know he was by himself in the room or something of that nature sure. and i know there are like youtube channels out there that will like go out and figure out a way to get a hold of these these mods or hacks oh yeah there's shit. plenty of them and then they'll expose them online so it's like if you are experiencing players doing this then they're most likely cheating and this is what these do and, then, and i think some oh. of them think they're oh, trying yeah. to bring limelight to to what these hackers are doing i think other what it mostly does though, about 90 percent of people that watch that video is like okay i'm gonna go try this shit for myself now i know what he was trying to go i think his angle was for educational purposes right. um but i still think because of his notoriety and and how much popular he how popular he is and how many yep. people go to him uh i think just the fact of showing it is enough as you promoting it even if you oh. say don't do drugs kid but this is what drugs do <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um and i mean i think there's an argument that had on that end you know don't do drugs but i'm going to tell you what i'm going to show you what acid does to you it's like <laughs> why yeah well why? okay so i found another article about um looking at it uh it says that he wasn't in a competitive mode so i don't know if that was means he was in like a single player mode or if he was just like that playing build, that build mode thing that they have like where you have like, no because the video shows him shooting at, at like other players and stuff which oh, i don't man. think the building mode had that if it was truly like a single player build mode he would be by himself right okay so i think he just went so, in because i know they added like a God, so they added a ranked mode, I think, and I think that's what he wasn't in. Regardless, though, it says when you're like, if you those terms of agreement that we all talk about yeah. and how we all know that no one reads yeah. them, yep. it says in there if you're using there. X, Y, and Z, that's like uh, you will get banned. So I, I think 
when before like H1Z1 fell off the map, I played a game of uh, their online, and I've still got a ban on my Twitch or my Twitch, my uh, my Steam account from like five years ago because I was in a game with another dude that was cheating, and it says you know, and I I had to break down the fucking like the like agreement and everything and like go and read through it's like if you're associated with anybody using any form of cheats and uh benefiting it from any way and technically i guess they said that i was benefiting from it because he had what they would call uh, almost back in like the modern warfare two days the sticky cheats where like you could be infected with somebody else's like hacks and shit this dude was able to like make me fly because he was like trolling our whole camp and just because i was in the entire situation i got a ban from it Oh, okay. Right, that see. makes sense. Um, so Jarvis is 17. Okay, so... Uh, In my opinion, yeah, pretty much an adult. In my <laughs> opinion, that's definitely past the age of knowing what you should and shouldn't be right, doing. Well, I knew yeah. that cheating was bad at the age of 13. I knew that it was not something that you should do online. Okay, here it is. So another, another... I just want to clarify this point of whether it was the build motor. So another article says that he's part of the face clan. He used aimbots during a public online match, not their competitive match, but he still used it in an online game mode against other players. You know, honestly, in my opinion is that, I mean, yeah, I think that's clear cut. Um, he should, I don't think just because you're popular, you should get special treatment because Ninja made the case like, but he lives off this. I'm like, well, then he needs to take accountability and responsibility and, he and professionalism. He shouldn't do you know? stupid shit. Like he should like because if that's the mentality that because you are popular you should get special treatment well then na- we right. already think the the government's corrupt because they get special treatment right. on things you know they commit a crime and they get way less of a sentence because they are a public figure that should not be at all you know one but should be not the using law. him as like their public spanking boy because of his notoriety like I mean are they singling him out for cheating when like what kind of like uh ninja was saying like if somebody else like if if any of us were to go on there and cheat you know like we could we could probably get away with it like we could go download some aim bot and get on in fortnite and play around no, he was saying that he was saying that if you ban someone that doesn't care they'll mm-hmm. just buy another hack and right. stuff like that another yeah. account and i'm so, all like well, what difference does that make if you're someone popular to be honest right. if you have because I would argue that someone popular who makes money has more disposable income that they could go and rebuy a hack or rebuy the game and not really care. Well, it's not even it's not even that. It's just it's basically setting the precedent of if you are a big enough player at this game, mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want you and get away with it. Right. Exactly, yeah. which and I don't I think don't that do that should be because that creates like a double standard yeah. almost. Well, I just and it's uh, like mm, let's not do that. I want them to like punish him. Like if there's other players out there that are cheating right now and they're not banning their accounts or or whatnot you know it's like but they're going to do it to this guy and they're going to call him out and it's going to be like this huge news story all over the gaming industry news sites and shit like that. well no because it's it's, it's a big it's a big deal because, because he's popular. he has all these followers and right. he was making all he made like a youtube video talking about it and like crying about how like i didn't think this was going to get me in trouble and it's like dude you're Don't you are legitimately shit. cheating that's <laughs> against the rules yep get no, fucked that's understandable and and yeah he should definitely have to face you know punishment. In, in, in my opinion i don't really care how old you are he could have been 15 and i still wouldn't have felt sorry for him at all because if you are basically stepping into the adult world making money doing something having your own brand and business i'm sorry but that's part of the package if you do yep. if you want to be a big boy then you need to take big boy responsibilities and that is just how it should be throughout it doesn't matter who you are if you break the rules, you can't come in here and claim ignorance. It's like the best, take it as a lesson and don't do it the next time. And now you're a better person. And that's all it needs to be. You just accept your accountability. You knew, I bet, I think that's a lie that he doesn't know that it was going to be banned. He knew. I. He's not that dumb. No one's that dumb. I'm sorry. But I'm sure there's a little voice inside that we all have was saying, I probably shouldn't be doing this. It's there for a fucking reason. And I don't think he's a stupid kid. I think he's pretty. I bet he's pretty no, smart. Yeah, seventeen. And he's just my nephew, seventeen. Yeah. You know, and he, and he knows. Yeah. you know, shit like. Like that. I said, I knew that cheating was bad. At, you know, when I was thirteen. Like right. I. Knew okay, it was bad. so actually, it looks like they might be making an example out of this, though. So I, I've been looking at more and more articles about this. <laughs> so it was a non-competitive game mode, but he wasn't even using his main account. He was using a alternative account, not his actual account. Well, then my question is, why would he do that? 
Probably because he knew he that knew. it was gonna, exactly something was going to happen. Exactly my point. Exactly my point. So I, I think this whole, yeah. I think he's trying to play the whole I didn't know card. Well, you obviously didn't know because why would you make a throwaway account yeah. for this purpose? Now it's you didn't want it to. Yeah. Now, now we're going to the, the whole thing is like, he's like, no, I know this is wrong. And I know this is going to get me in trouble. So I'm going to use an account to avoid my main account that makes me money. So what he was trying to do is he was he was being that typical he, teenage trying to be smart outsmart the, the system I, I, exactly like oh and i didn't i didn't know I'm like well why'd you make another account yeah, like exactly. why would you do that well i mean i just didn't want to do my lookout why why well i didn't want to get banned obviously okay so honestly wrong, i know. think he did know something was going to happen but he was probably expecting it to happen to that a specific account exactly he was trying to not outsmart the system. not it, so instead of banning that account, they said, no, you're trying to circumvent the rules. So basically, you as a person like, are no longer allowed to play this exactly. game ever. You know, if he was, if he did it off stream, it would have been t entirely yeah. different. But the yeah. fact that he streamed it, they <laughs> knew that was him. Yep. It's like, minute, okay, yeah, like, you think you're trying bad. to be smart. Now we have actually like the receipt that you did it. And now we're just going to ban your actual account. So or, no, e even if you like recorded it and put it on YouTube, that's still enough evidence to go, hey, look, you did X, Y, and Z. Dude, bye you're bye. proving Thanks that you're that you the person who cares what your your avatar, your account is. You are doing it, you mm -hmm. know, so that and they see that. So it's like, I don't feel sorry for him at all. Yep. You know, now this, just this don't went do it. from like, like some kid it. pleading and crying to like he's the you know old enough you know teenager to know he fucked up and he was doing stupid shit and being shady and it backfired so now he's gonna cry wolf and dude and my 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 daughter who is like 11 doesn't even play video games would know that this is something you shouldn't do right you know like i said um the fact that he is who he is and he is he is age is what it is uh there's no excuse he knew what he was doing even though he's trying to play he didn't he knew what he was doing and I don't feel sorry for him. He makes money, so there should be a, a there should be a higher standard for people that make content and make money off of things. You don't make money off of showing people what cheats do. I'm sorry, that's not oh, what you. Also, something else funny to point out I just read about is the apology video. They estimated he made about twenty thousand dollars off of that apology video alone. And people and people are saying like, if you were actually sorry, me. Your mic went off. Oh my god! I swear to Dang. God. Okay, so he made twenty thousand dollars off the apology video. Yeah. And people are saying, like, if you were actually sorry, you probably shouldn't have monetized that video. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, like I said, um, <laughs> it, it, no, that's exactly what it is. He's he's a kid still, yeah. and like. Uh, I, I look at him as a business. I don't look at him as a seven year old kid. I look at him as a business, as a brand, because he's making large amount of money off of what he's doing, regardless if it's an apology or showing someone's stream. You are the face of your brand and you fucked up. You did something you weren't supposed to do. And you knew that because you made a different account thinking that you're going to be smarter than the actual system, but you're dumb because you recorded it and everyone saw. So it's like, I, I think you just need to take, you're not sorry. He's really not. I don't, I don't he's sorry this. about all the money he's going to be losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Let, let's yeah. be honest His here. His mom's sitting there. <laughs> what the fuck did you do? Apologize. Oh, nah, wow. like, yeah, I don't feel sorry for him at all. And I don't feel sorry for anyone that, that does it and gets banned. Like, that, that's what it should be. And no, and honestly, they, they shouldn't get that special treatment because, like uh, Weezer was saying in chat, they, like, it sounds like Ninja and all them has like this millionaire complex where it's like, no, but I have lots of money. I'm not like these peasants. I should get no, special he, treatment. He's, he, yeah. Well, he's saying that, well, he's a content creator, his livelihood. I'm like, yeah, which also means he should take responsibility for fucking up. Like he's making right. money compared to someone that doesn't make money off of this. Like he benefits from this shit. Like why should he benefit again? Like why should he be double dipping? You know? You know what I mean? Like he's gonna make money regardless. This whole thing is just gonna make him money because now there's more, there are more eyes on him and Maybe everything. Maybe that's what it you know? is. Maybe it's just publicity to, to try to reach out. It's like he, if he knows, you know, from a business standpoint, especially if his mom's probably his manager. She's like, well, you got banned. You know, you're gonna have to make the most of this. You know, now they're trying to use this PR as a money making thing before, like, try to drain, you know, all that they can out of Fortnite before he has to move on and, and do something else. Yeah.
I don't know. Well, I mean, like here to kind of like um, move a, just a side of that, but on the same topic. Like, what do you? Someone posted on the twi- on Twitter. They asked a question: Do you think oh, people that cheat in video games should be fined? And if you if they should be fined, how much do you think would be the appropriate amount they should be fined? He gave like an example, like zero, a hundred, five hundred, a thousand more, or whatever. I mean, what do you guys think would be an appropriate punishment for cheating? Like, what kind of repercussions in the real life besides just getting a permanent ban? Yeah, like in multiplayer. Well, it's like not a... even that. It's like you know, you look at like real life, like just like insider traders, people who cheat the stock market and system. They go to jail for that. Like a lifetime ban from your favorite video game is way less of a punishment than going to jail for cheating. Yeah. Like, you'll be fine, kid. Go play another game. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess in the in the regards of kind of like how Ninja was kind of like hearing it out, if it's like a multiplex like money making event and somebody gets caught cheating with like a fucking million dollar prize pool or something, yeah, I think there needs to be a lot more severe punishment in that term to where like if it's something like what this kid was doing in a public, just non competitive, just playing format. Well, yeah. I'm just saying like everyday people, you know, the more the right. other ninety eight percent of relatable people that can I think relate if to anything, not if the... the game is free, you're banned for life. If the game costs, I think you should have to rebuy the game and reestablish your character and level up and all that shit. Um but if it's like a free game, yeah, I mean if you're gonna go and cheat on a game, then you don't deserve to play that game. If you Honestly, if, I feel like about the act, game. I think there should be. Um, well, most people that cheat, I'll tell you right now, don't care about their 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 accounts being banned to no, buy another they'll, game. They'll, they'll make another account or make yeah, another exactly. game. Try yeah. to do what they call what do they call that? Like a, a hardware ban where they like like oh match like, a Mac hard IP. Drive. Yeah, Mac yeah. IP. Well, yeah. like 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 what Steam does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's like, what they should do. Yeah, that's exactly. But I mean, honestly, I feel like you know uh, there should be a fine on top of it. Personally. If because they if they're just gonna buy the game over again or whatever, I mean, you might as well just make it like something in the real life, yeah. you know. Like I, I'm not saying you should go to jail or anything, but I mean, like, hey, throw another hundred dollar fine on that, right? Whatever for for emotional distress on all the players, you know, or just <laughs> oh just, god, just, just, just do something like that. Because right. there's, I mean, honestly, there are some cheaters that just go completely unbanned for oh, like yeah. ever. Like I got you know, I um, completely but, left Rainbow Six Siege on the PC. Um, after about three years of playing it like nonstop on the computer because the, the the hackers just got so fucking ridiculous. Like, I mean, I would be up against, like, walls, and they would shoot me from outside through a window, hit through the wall, and then hit me in the head. I mean, I'm saying, like, yeah, have a fine on top of you being hardware banned, you know? So it's like, not only do you have to buy a new computer, but you have this other fine on top of it just for the sake oh, yeah. of having another fine. You know, because even if they can pay it, I don't care who you are, unless you're a millionaire at this point, no one likes to pay additional money for any, like no one game and other people's conveniences. And just to be a straight up dick, no one has the, the enough like income for that kind of hobby. There are very, very few people to have it, but if they are going to do it, you might as well make it inconvenient for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean and- Either way you look, there's there's ways around fines and, and hardware bans and everything else. You're right. But, I mean, it still makes it hella inconvenient. Because I mean, some people, like, uh, people that hack, are, I don't think are millionaires at all. Uh, they, no. they don't really care. I think he's they buy the pertaining game once. to this phase guy. Oh, I'm not even talking about the people that are millionaires. We're just I think talking about in general. Yeah, just the casual everyday gamer, like me, you, you know, nine to five jobs, Monday through Friday. That kind of, it's not the millionaire... Like, if Ninja ever cheated, there would be, like, public backlash. He would lose a lot more money than just... $100 to him is obviously nothing, and a yeah. hardware ban is obviously nothing, because he could just go buy the hardware. But, I mean, to have that publicly known, if Ninja cheated, or Shroud, or Dr. Dishman, or all these big other people mm-hmm. that have won competitions, there would be such backlash on stuff. They would lose, like... They would uh, lose uh, people that would that are endorsing them. They would lose so much money from that, from just their sponsors and everything else, you know? Right. And uh, they would have to work on rebuilding their image from that you know really uh, this whole event just breaks down to don't be a shit piece of shit always always Always. and we harp on it every week on this show Mm -hmm. but people still do it don't be a poopy head guys just don't (laughs) or you know for the sorry the censored version don't be a poop emoji piece of poop emoji (laughs) (laughs) yeah poop cake (laughs) 
Uh, I got a, I got a funny story. Just remember the word poop. Like say, t- remind me of my poop story whenever we go to the post show. All right, talking. I'll talk. Uh, did you did you poop yourself? No, it's it's worse. Okay. All right, we'll we'll get to. Oh oh ooh, I yeah. like where this is going. So I think that's it, right? We're we're done here. Does anybody have anything news wise left to to talk about? Uh, I I don't. I don't think I have anything okay. right now. No, nah, I think case, that was really all the big stuff that we were going to talk about for this week. Sweet. Well, in that case, that is the show, guys. There's another Saturday completed and done. It was a little bit shorter than usual. Well, maybe not. We're we're 55 minutes right now, so we're we're doing pretty good. So uh, no, it was a, it was a healthy dialogue of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, we were all it was, talking and things, my so. story kind of led into Alex's story, which was kind of nice. Right. Yes. And mine was yes, just random, so enjoy. <laughs> hey, yours was still exciting. It was good stuff that we wanted to know about. Yeah, we got the fanboy over how tall fucking Pablo Schreiber is. <laughs> he's fucking, he's a monster. He's a monster. But anyways, <laughs> we love you guys. Another Saturday complete. We will, uh, for you audio listeners, we'll be back next Saturday. We hope you guys have a good week. And until next time, go subscribe to us on Patreon so you can get these pre and post shows. You guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. See you, everybody. Goodbye. Okay,